Right then, a bit later in day than we planned. We're only probably going to have half an hour or so today on it before we, um, we have to call it a day, but we'll be back on it in the morning. So, tidied up a few things that we don't need immediately. A couple of other bits that I'm going to shift out of the way. But Paul and Dan are both going to get ripped straight into this. Bushes out, all old bushes out that we don't need. All new spherical ones and solid bushes pressed in. Um, dog bone bushes, all that sort of stuff, get all them in. And then start building assemblies, get them all mocked up, and get them thrown on. As easy as that, so we'll, uh, we'll start recording them getting cracked on and uh, we'll go from there. So, early into the video, you'll see me and Dan scratching his heads a little bit because, like an idiot, I don't test fit old before we start recording. We just get straight into it. And this subframe, it's off a four wheel drive car. And if you look here, come on, Paul, be my glamorous assistant. I think, have you got it wrong way around? Is that right way around? I think that's right. I think. A bit. I don't think it is, but that needs to go there. We've got a sub uh, wheel well interference, shall we describe it. So it's not a big deal because this subframe will let us have um, more clearance to put a nice diffuser in. So taking wheel well out means we can chop this bit of bumper out, take that out and have a nice diffuser. So it's no big deal. We'll make it happen. So keep watching. Right, so Dan's managed to chop some of this out. It's not very heavy at all. Probably whatever we're putting back in there will be as heavy, so it is what it is, but we don't need a spare wheel well. So, that's where that is. It's gone. So, we just need to, we're just welding subframe because it's got a crack in it. So, I'll show you some videos of Dan welding it. And we're just gonna make a we're just gonna make up some little pieces to stop one of bolts being adjustable. What? That off. It has snapped off. No, you need a new bolt. A new bumper. Yeah, a new bumper. We've got one. So George is helping us today as well, aren't you, George? Yeah. You've been doing some good helping. And you keep taking Mickey out of daddy, don't you? What do you keep saying? What do you keep What? What do you keep saying? 
Right then. Right then, cheeky monkey. So we need some new handbrake cables, don't we, George? So Paul's getting cracked on. We'll go over and see what he's doing. I've just pressed this bush in. Me, personally. I've done some work, Anta George, you helped me. So that's good. How's this looking then, Paul? Yeah, pretty good. Easy to adjust, or is it uh, not as simple yeah. as we'd hope? Oh, yeah. Too far, you've just got to pull that bolt out, push it arm forward, twist the arm around. Right, and that's going to be adjusting caster when we uh, yeah, get it in car, isn't it? Caster, not with camber. Yeah, so we've pushed these out as far as they'll go for camber. I think we'll probably end up leaving it where we'll set these at probably about maybe a little bit longer than that, depending where we go, and do all adjustment on top mounts then rather than at the bottom. So. Hopefully get plenty of cast. I think we want to make them fairly long, don't we? But yeah, we'll, uh, yeah. out, they're fairly long as well, so you've got a decent amount of adjustment, haven't we? So, yeah. And the dog bone bush is in, anti-roll bars on. This subframe is going to, going to be just the spare, so we're not going to spend too much time. There's a few used bolts on here. We're going to leave this as a spare one. Same with this steering rack. This is not the, the one that we're going to be keeping. We're going to take one off Mark 6 Golf. I'm going to take my gloves off. They said I don't work with kids and animals. And on, I work with Paul and Dan every day. Make your decision which one they are. So, the bit that Dan had to weld is here at the back. So, we welded that up. That's a lot better now. And then the other bit that we've welded while we could, we've put some little plates on here. These are normally, I don't know if you can see here, they're normally slotted and they've got a camber of just a, a, like a, a cam, eccentric cam bolt. These are a bit of a pain to get in at, and they move around a lot. So this, this is an adjustable arm anyway, so rather than having adjustment, end adjustment, we've put them in there so to lock them off, they'll just be fixed. And then Dan's managed to get the bushes out. So these, they're a very tight fit, but they'll, go, they'll tap in there. That one goes on bottom, and away you go. So they're solidly mounted. Are you helping, George? Yeah. It's stuck in there now, isn't it? Can't do it out. No, can't no get it out. Can pinch it. Nobody can pinch it. Oh, we've got it out. Yeah. So, Dan's going to get this whacked on, and then we're not far off, ready to start uh, bolting all arms and everything up to this. So, see how we get on. So, another thing that's just turned up is some air jacks. So, we'll put, um, put a video up of these sort of things in action. We've got these from JLS Motorsport. You can get them from uh, AP Racing and places like that, but they're a little bit more expensive. Not sure why these are pink. I'd have thought they're meant to be red, but anyway. So these are the same ones that are in the Leon. The reason why we went for these ones and the same stroke and everything, which is how much it comes out, is so that we can use the same locks. Because we've, we've, these are locks, aren't they? So what these are for, they're like an axle stand when you jack a car up. That pushes the car up, and when that's out, you stick that in there, and that's like a safety device, so if the air disappears, you're not going to get dropped on. You can also get what they call um, elephant's feet, and they're like a thing that you put it, similar, a similar thing to this in, in principle, but you put that in, then you drop the jack down, put a plate in. <laughs> you're not getting away a lot, George. You put the plate in, and then you go up again, then you put them locks in. Look at them. So you can go even higher. So you can get two stage ones of them as well. So you could go quite high with car, but we'll probably only go for one stage. So these have got to go through a sleeve. So we're going to have to mill some threads into that end mech, something for this to adjust. It's like a coilover. You'd have to adjust it up and down. That's the lance. So this is connected to this, and that shoves onto a fitting, which will be in here somewhere. But yeah, that shoves onto that fitting, which then sends all the air. That shoves onto there like that. That sends all the air around to the, um, through the pipes, to each air jack, and away you go. Well, we've only got three, because you only need one at back. So hopefully that works, yeah? So. 
These are not getting installed straight away. We'll do a first shakedown before we mess about with these, but let's see how we get on with these as well. So, we're almost there. If you watched Eagle Eyed while we're doing the uh, time lapse, you'll notice a bit of head scratching going on when it came to rear wheel bearings. Turns out it's a little, a little washer. I'll grab it. Where's it gone? It's there. That, that got lost in all old stuff, because these hubs were meant to be going off for sandblasting. But never got round to it. We took all this stuff off. They're critical, otherwise your bearing just bottoms out. So we sorted that, we found them, bearings are going on. Them couple of hours we've lost digging through Etos, Etka, speak to suppliers. Can't get them back, but it doesn't matter. So we're gonna put all this back together. Then we're gonna uh, get it dropped on its wheels and uh, check where everything is, see, uh, see if everything's out on it. We've already done the measurements for the eight inch wheels. They're on the way now, I've sent order off for them. When they come back, we'll order the nine inch ones based on what offset we've got there, because the caliper clearance were critical for these eights, but then it's not gonna be as much for the nines, we're gonna have a bit more to play with, so. But it's the arch clearance that's gonna be critical on that, so we're gonna probably end up trimming these trimming the fronts. We've still yet to do something fancy with them, but we can do that whenever. But the dampers are all on, the Bilstein. These are the two-way ones like we talked about before. So how you set up two-way adjustable dampers. I asked Bilstein and I weren't really, I wouldn't say I weren't happy with response, but I kind of didn't agree with what they said. So what we're gonna do, you start with a bump low and the rebound all the way to the bottom, so number one. So the bump, I'm going to start it at about number three. If we go out and straight away it's too hard, we're going to drop it down to two and see what happens, but I doubt it. We're probably going to end up at, say, five or six on the bump and uh, maybe might only end up at two or three on the rebound. But the idea is you go out until it's that hard that you can't drive it, back it off a click or two, Test it again, yeah, it's fine. Then you start on your rebound. So bump first, then rebound. So see how that goes. So anyway, we'll have a quick look. Arms are all on, bushes are all in. These are the only ones with the camber adjustment. So it's gonna really do two more than camber, as I said I thought. All this is bolted up, anti-roll bar, with adjustable drop links. All this is all bolted in. Spare wheel well's gone. So the fuel tank, we're potentially going to put um, a Quattro fuel tank on, just so you get a bit better weight distribution. The tanks always stay sort of full weight. With a normal tank, you end up with a little bit more over this side, which when you've got the driving on the right, it's not as ideal. Anyway, a Quattro tank, I can go straight out with an exhaust, no bends in it, and we've got a nice little plan for what we're going to do with middle at bumper there, but we'll see how that works. These are going to be getting changed, we'll nick them off donor car. Steering rack's coming off donor car, but we'll leave that on until we've uh, changed subframe. 
So the arms are all on, built really nice. These are definitely not track ready. 3D printed uh, plastic brake belt. Uh, I'll get my words out in a minute. Brake brackets are not, um, they're not gonna be any good. So the next job, once we've got all this built up, drop down, then we're gonna try and get the uh, pedal box stuff done get the ABS pump mounted roughly where we think it wants to be. It's going to be wherever the neatest pipe work can be. And then once we've done that, I'm going to get um, Ben at Carlton Hydraulics who does all our stuff. He's going to come, have a look, spec up what hoses we need. It's, um, it's a bit easier for him to do that than us to order them. If we're ordering them all, uh, post, getting them posted out, it can be a bit of a pain getting what fittings you want exactly how you want them, so if you're just getting to come and just do it, it should be easier, so most of these brake lines that are in here are going to get, we're going to have to get rid of them because they're, um, they're no use to us because it's teed in, each one's got to go back to the ABS pump, so we'll get that sorted. So this Mark 6 Golf you see here, we're not chopping back end off and putting a Mark 6 conversion on like Danny wants me to do, that ain't happening, might as well get a Mark 6 Golf I've got to do that. This is like a badly bent, side damaged car, but the critical part, what we need, is all sorted. So this is, I might be a mistake when I get it off, but yeah, this is actually an oval port, so I thought this was a round port engine, so it works even better for us. I can tell it's an oval port because it's got solenoid injectors, they're going in, they're going in that way, the, the piezo ones from the round parts, they go into the top, just because they are the solenoid and piezo system works, but that's boring stuff at the minute. Um, so yeah, CFFB engine. So this is a 140. We're taking all the wiring from this entire car and gonna rip it all down to the bare minimum and put as much stuff from this car that we need to keep so that if we ever need to order it in the future, we just use this chassis number. That's how we try and do these sort of projects. So the full wiring harness is coming from this car all the way through, stripped to everything we don't need. The engine's not gonna be this one, but this is a good donor for what we're doing. So we'll put this to one side and use that, at least the block on the head. Um, but like all the stuff under the bonnet that we're gonna need, so coolant bottle, air box, because we're only needing 220, 230 horsepower. These are not a restriction until knocking on 300. We'll keep this, we might modify it a little bit, but all the front end stuff that's not the Golf R stuff, all that's gonna be getting used. Um, fuel tank, if we don't get the Quattro one, we'll use that one with that fuel pump. We get rid of this high pressure pump when we do that. Um, headlights and stuff like that, we'll keep as spares. Um, we're not gonna take any doors at all like that off this, because we're not in good fettle. Um, hopefully that opens, it does. The dashboard, we're gonna use this dashboard. Clocks, we're gonna use those clocks and any other little bits that we might need out of this car. So it's always good to have a full donor car and one that's got most of what you're gonna need. So in theory, this is most of the running gear, electrical sort of components for that car. So, see how it works. If it were a round port, we'd have still used it. We've done that conversion before. You can, you can do the round port to oval port conversion fairly simply using that wire and everything. It'd have made, it'd have made absolutely no difference. So, steering rack from this one as well, because this is a Gen 3 steering rack, which is the, the one that we want to run with a new subframe. Uh, what other stuff we're gonna use? I don't know, really, I think we'll just rip everything out of this that we don't need. Give it all back to Steph at SRS, cause he's got the car. He's getting everything that we don't use, basically. It's his car and we're gonna end up paying him for what we need. Um, so yeah. Well, the last bit of this video, I'm assuming, it'll be dropping this down, putting it onto its wheels, and rolling it out of the door.
So, Paul and Dan's done well. They've got this drop down onto its wheels. Like I said, we're putting the two forge wheels on. These are just while we uh, wait for them to come back. As you can see, the front brakes only just fit with these wheels. There should be a little bit more clearance with the, uh, the two forge ones, but they look nice. Really happy with them. Can't wait for brackets and spacers to come back, machined in aluminium rather than plastic, so can't wait for that one. So, I think this concludes the video. Not sure, it was, we filmed a few videos in between and uh, I think even Danny lost count and lost track of where we are. So, if you like what we're doing, share it, subscribe, comment if you want to see what else about car. We've got tons more stuff to do. This car is absolutely nowhere near, um, so we need to get cracking.